Minglaba and welcome to MI Radio's Myanmar Today. I am Aga Jo. Today we are reports on online booking for Pakoda's maybe solution after lifting restrictions. Bidang Sulado representatives discussing union taxation law ordinance. And State Council urging let's not relax till we reach our victory over COVID-19. Group of companies donating negative pressure ambulance. All of that on this edition of Myanmar Today. But for now, let's take a look at what's happening in local news. The Central Bank of Myanmar has announced 500 chats banknote will be circulated on the 19th of July. The avert side of the banknote depicts national leader Bojo Aung San as the main portrait and its reverse is uh, printed with the building of the Central Bank of Myanmar. The size of new banknote will have 150 millimeters in length and 70 millimeters in width. Its prominent color is red-brown. The embossing method is used in printing of the new 500 chat note, and that the denomination number and the text of the Central Bank of Myanmar are highly visible and have a rough texture. The serial number lies horizontally in Myanmar numbers and vertically in English digits. On the left and right corners of the adverse side have the embossed nine short stripes, especially for the persons with a visual impairment. The watermarks of the 500 chat denomination and Bojo Aung San are visible on the left of the Bojo Aung San at the adverse side when the note is viewed against the light. The plan is underway to implement the hotel zone project. The plot of land is 60 acres wide. The project is a part of ecotourism development and the hotel zone will be near Sri Sato Pakoda's precinct in Mimbu district. That is said by Umian saying the regional head of the Directory of Hotels and Tourism in Magui. The environment of forests, mountains and land near Sri Sato remains intact. The 60 acre land is located beyond Fletin Bridge near Sri Sato. Authorities have already granted permission to implement the hotel zone with the approval of the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Irrigation and the Ministry of Hotels and Tourism. The relevant departments are coordinating to draw the map. After drawing the map, they will design the structure of the hotel zone as to where the forest will be, where the lake will be and the hotel will be built on how many acres of land, etc. The value of Myanmar's imports between the 1st of October and 3rd of July in the current fiscal year 2019 and 2020 stood at $15.09 billion, as an increase of $1.26 billion from $13.8 billion uh, registered in the year ago period, according to the data released by the Ministry of Commerce. The value of imports in the consumer, capital, intermediate goods, and CMP businesses groups rose significantly in the current fiscal. During half of the current fiscal, capital goods such as auto parts, vehicles, machines, steel, and airplane parts were brought into the country. Their import value was estimated at $5.7 billion. The figure was $1.4 billion higher compared to the same period in the previous fiscal year. Meanwhile, Myanmar imported consumer products worth of $2.6 billion, including pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, and palm oil. A relief flight of Myanmar Airways International landed at the Yangon International Airport in the afternoon of 16th of July, bringing back a total of 165 Myanmar citizens who were stranded in Malaysia. The Ministry of Labor, Immigration and Population, Ministry of Health and Sports, and local officials helped the returnees for health inspections and arranged for 21-day quarantine. To bring back the Myanmar citizens who are stranded in foreign countries in relief flight and charter flight in accordance with instructions from National Level Central Committee for Coronavirus Disease 2019. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs cooperated with the relevant ministries and Myanmar embassies from respective countries. A total of 973 Myanmar citizens from Malaysia have been brought back by seven relief flights to date. That's all with the local news. Now we will move on to our first report. Pakotas and other religious sites in Myanmar have been temporarily closed starting from the 9th of April and to the present time for the purpose of protecting and taking precautionary measures. 
but as the easement of the restrictions will hopefully be considering near the end of July, Pagoda's respective board of trustees have been looking forward to a solution to avoid crowding on Pagoda's by implementing an online booking system. David Tana got the detail. Myanmar pagodas, which are stupas that typically house Buddhist relics, including relics associated with Buddha, are the huge part of Buddhism. As unfortunate events of COVID-19 occurred as pandemic all over the world, pagodas and other religious sites in Myanmar have been temporarily closed starting from 9th of April until the present time for the purpose of protecting and taking precautionary measures. Speaking to MR Radio about the implementation and the purpose of online registration, U Dan Zo, member of Shurigon Pagoda Board of Trustees, said, Security system sura dika ro jama yi twa po. No, lu du lu we o phya po ma ma phit po twa. Dika We can only reopen Shurigon Pagoda depending on the instructions of the Ministry of Religious Affairs and Culture and the Ministry of Health and Sports. We are arranging for the online booking system to avoid the crowds of the worshippers on the pagodas. It is some kind of online registration. Possibly there will be many people who come to the pagoda as usual without registering. We are going to allow those walking worshippers to register directly and immediately. In fact, we intend to record those who are coming to pagoda and when and where they come from. By doing so, we can trace those people if something happens. We also have to decide how many people will be allowed to come to Pagoda via online and also walk in worshippers. We will hear all the changes and improvements that will be occurring after the possible relaxation of restriction. Uta Nai U, patron of Suli Pagoda Board of Trustees. One of the ideas that we have discussed in depth was about the limitation of visitors for a pagoda in a healthy way, which is to make an online booking system in which limited visitors can register and sign in per day to come visit the pagoda and spread the visitors per hour scale throughout the day to avoid crowds and to exercise social distancing. Shwirigong Pagoda was the first priority for adopting that system. For Suli Pagoda, we will also be working around the development of the webpage to help draw up the healthy guidelines for the visitors and new normal limitations such as social distancing and other necessaries for good. For the inner part of the Suli Pagoda, it has already been facilitated and equipped with the tools such as temperature scanners, caution signboard regarding COVID-19, as well as the guidelines from the Ministry of Health and Sports. We have also fully educated the pagodas, volunteers, and workers to follow the guidelines. We will also have to limit the visitors to about 200 visitors at the pagoda. Visitors may have to wait before going inside the pagoda until the limit has been reached. We are really cautious about the second wave of COVID-19 and are really wary of that. We won't be taking any risky action before the situations become usual and controllable. I'm guessing here that there will be some changes after the 15th of July. I have also asked the perspective of one of the religious persons, Do Jin Tao from Ledang Ken, for her opinion on the temporary closure of Shredagon Pagoda and other religious sites and her take on possible reopening of Shredagon Pagoda after the relaxation of strict regulations. As you know, the first wave of COVID-19 is in recovery state now. Some people wear masks, but some people don't. But I am still very cautious of the second wave. That is why I always follow the rules and regulations to prevent as much as I can. For the pagoda temporarily closing, I am very neutral about it, as it is to prevent forming crowds in those famous religious sites. But I am still really looking forward for the reopening of Shuidagong Pagoda in a really preventive way from COVID-19. I wish people following those rules for the greater good of our country and the people. 
Reporter David Turner reporting from Myanmar International Radio. That's a report on online booking for pagodas may be solution after lifting restrictions. At a second day meeting of the 17th regular session, Bidang Sulodo representatives had discussions on union taxation law ordinance to come into force in the implementation of the COVID-19 Economic Relief Plan (CERP) quickly. Two theory two has more. The Office of the President has promulgated Number no. One Stroke 2020 Union Taxation Law Ordinance in accordance with the Overcoming S1 COVID-19 Economic Relief Plan for the recovery of the crisis-hit businesses resulting from the COVID-19 disease on 12 June 2020. The Union Taxation Law Ordinance is going to be in effect for the 2020-2021 tax year. In the ordinance, the following tax exemptions have been permitted: a non-refundable tax credit on 10% of the total additional wage and salary in 2019-2020 income year; b deduction of the amount equivalent. To 125% of the total additional wage and salary in 2019-2020 income year from the income as the expenditure. C. Non-refundable tax credit on 10% of the total value for additional imports of the computer equipment in 2019-2020 income year. D. One-time depreciation on the amount equivalent to 125% of reduced cost on additional computer equipment for 2019-2020 income year. At its second day meeting of the 17th regular section, Bidang Sulodo representatives had discussions on union taxation law ordinance to come into force in the implementation of the COVID-19 economic relief plan (CERP). Quickly, Dr. Chu Wen, local representative from Malai Township, discusses. COVID-19 has put the Congress in a bind. Panama Congress can be a lay along the way. Simangai Panama. As we know, the countries all over the world are suffering from the impact of COVID-19, especially in economic aspect. Differences form in the developed countries, and Myanmar, a developing country, is still trying to build the infrastructure. And all the expenses spent from COVID-19 processes come from the public budget. According to the Ministry of Planning, Finance, and Industry, the ration between the national GDP and deficit are expected to. 5.41 percent in the 2022-2021 national budget. The economic growth of Myanmar is expected to reach 6.4 percent in 2019 to 2020 fiscal years, but the growth for the year of 2020-2021 will drop to 4.3 percent. That's why it is very important to prevent the tax evasion. Wu Kenchou, local representative from Limboy Township, also discussed. The first and third statements in the union taxation law ordinance are allowed from tax credit, and the second and fourth statements in the ordinance are allowed from depreciation and deduction of the amount equivalent of the total additional wage and salary. And how is for the businesses who show the loss also? So the businesses which do not give the additional wage in 2019 to 2020 income year cannot take benefit for that. Some businesses have already given the tax for the last three months of the 2020. So it should be clear that whether these businesses will receive the refund. The Union Taxation Law Ordinance is meant to implement Goal Two of the COVID-19 Economic Relief Plan (CERP). Which can reduce the impact on the private sector by promoting investment, trade, and banking enterprises. This is news reporting from Emma Radio. I am Kyoti Ritu. That's a report on Bidang Sulodo representatives discussing union taxation law ordinance. Stay with us as we bring you more reports on Myanmar today. 
State Councillor Dong San Suu Kyi also wrote on her Facebook, "Let's not relax till we reach our victory over COVID-19." As the number of COVID-19 cases is on the increase from the returnees, the people are urged to follow the guidelines. Kyuti Ritu and Bomu have more. Myanmar reported a total of 339 COVID-19 cases with 6 deaths and 270 full recoveries. Around the world, COVID-19 spread 188 countries, afflicting over 13 million people and killing over 573,000 people. We regard to the prevention against the spread of the COVID-19, Professor Dauda Zodanto, Director General of the Department of Medical Research, spoke to Emma Radio, he said. In our country, the infection was found out the first from the returnee. At that time, people were very afraid of the infection. From the first cases, the ones have increased continually to 20. People shouldn't forget the likelihood of the second wave. In the prevention, I have found that a lot of people participate in the process. By comparing to the other countries, government has also made greater effort in the prevention of the first wave and will do the same for the second wave too. The latest infection cases doesn't even show the symptoms. That's why people need to be cautious a lot. State Councilor Don San Suji also wrote on her Facebook Let's not relax till we reach our victory over COVID-19. On her status, she said, during the COVID-19 period, the government had to pay special attention to big cities like Yangon, Mandalay, and Nebidov. For the population in those cities and the domestic spread of the infection rate is the highest in Yangon. She urged the people to follow the rules that the government restricted with a good competitive spread. Unini, Region leader representative from the Komyote South Township spoke to MI Radio about the current prevention process of the COVID-19 Prevention Committee. He said, As the COVID Prevention Committee, we have to do the prevention. But in some townships, some ignore the guidelines even they go out. Most of the people think that infections can be found out as a local transmission hasn't been found out for a month. The MOHS also warns the people about the infection cases all around the world through their page. People need to be careful as long as we have seen these cases from the returnees. People must wear masks when they go out to the crowded place like markets and public areas. As a township COVID-19 comedy, we collaborate with the youths and volunteer organizations and gave an educational speech about the COVID-19. We already announced the infection cases in time. We delivered the masks to the poor people. We have sprayed the pesticides to the high schools which are going to open in a few days. Then we strictly organized the quarantine centers in our township. People should need to participate with the regional government together to prevent the second wave infection. The Ministry of Health and Sport has tested a total of 94,872 people since late March. Yangon is the highest number of COVID-19 patients among the region and state of the country. Many countries, including US, Brazil, UK, India, Pakistan and Bangladesh, have seen record-breaking spike in daily COVID-19 cases in recent weeks. Mount Danwin, the resident number 16 watch from Lindaya Township, he said about how they were worried about the infections. We are worried because more returnees are found out with COVID-19, but there are still no more local transmission currently. The simple and best way to protect the local infection is to wear the face mask. We saw in the news that few returnees are trying to avoid quarantine. It makes the public to worry more as this kind of wrongdoing leads to the start of local transmission. I will inform the respective officials or health worker if I see this kind of matter and if I have the symptoms of COVID-19. That's a report on state councillor urging, let's not relax till we reach our victory over COVID-19.
A group of companies operating in Myanmar from China have collaborated together and donated two units of negative pressure ambulance to the Department of Medical Research in Yangon. According to the report, the negative pressure ambulance is a rare ambulance in Myanmar where there is only a handful of it. We listen has the full report. A group of companies, namely BIAC Group, Photon, and IME International Company Limited, together donated two negative pressure ambulances to the Department of Medical Research in Yangon. And the handing ceremony of the ambulance was held on 16 of July at the Department of Medical Research, attended by officials from donating companies. Mr. Tang Shu Fu, the Economic and Commercial Counselor of Chinese Embassy, Dr. Zadan Tun, Director General of the Department of Medical Research. According to the donors, each of these negative pressure ambulance is worth US dollar for the 3,000, and this sort of ambulance is very rare in Myanmar, making it one of the first hand ever in Myanmar. Speaking to the media about how important this donation is, Dr. Zodan Tung, Director General for the Department of Medical Research, said, <laughs> The donation ceremony we hold today here is quite different from the previous donations we had. For the fight against COVID-19, we usually received other equipment such as PPE, mask and testing kit. But what we have here today is quite different one as one of the donors himself is a medical doctor as well. So he understands the importance of this ambulance in the fight against COVID-19. And I can say what has been donated today is actually what we are in need of. This negative pressure ambulance is designed especially for the patients who are suffering from respiratory disease. And COVID-19 is also one of the diseases which results in respiratory problem. As we are in the process of medical emergency service, providing this course to the medical students in some of the big cities in Myanmar, and we are progressing in it. So in this emergency medical service, the ambulance, the major role in it for the patient to be able to reach the hospital in time. Therefore, I would like to express my gratitude to the donors on behalf of the government. Mr. Tang Shu Fu, the economic counselor of Chinese embassy, also spoke and said, I'm grateful to all the Chinese companies here in Myanmar, which have been participating in the donation programs from the first case of the virus reported in Myanmar, helping in the fight against COVID-19 from what they can by donating. As far as I can remember, there have been around 130 donations done by the Chinese companies to both governmental organizations and non-governmental organizations. Under the guidance of the government and the help from China, I believe we can defeat COVID-19 soon. The Department of Medical Research also made a statement saying that when the virus first hit Myanmar, by the end part of March, there was a sudden shortage of mass PPE and other medical equipment. However, the companies were always there to donate to the people in time of need, although those companies were also suffering from the same impacts financially, just like the public, but they still managed to donate. Dr. Ying Yilat is the Chief Operation Officer of IME International Company Limited, and he also spoke to the media and said, After the outbreak of COVID-19, several countries all over the world are suffering the impacts of this virus greatly, and it was not exceptional for our country as well. So, when the country was in need of all the protective tools and supplies in the fight against COVID-19, we saw the donation by many organizations and even by the personal donation to the necessary areas. This is why we feel that we have a part to do in the fight against this virus as well. So we decided to donate this negative pressure ambulance which we believe is a useful tool for the healthcare service. We all decided to donate negative pressure ambulance, which is quite rare in Myanmar. This is Willinson for MI Radio. 
Thus, a report on group of companies donating negative pressure ambulance. And that's all we have for today's reports, and it's time to check on some international news here on Myanmar today. China will keep deepening reform and expanding opening up and provide a better business environment for the investment and development of Chinese and foreign enterprises, Chinese President Xi Jinping said Wednesday in a reply letter to global CEOs. The fundamentals of China's long-term sound economic growth have not changed and will not change, she added. In what many believe is an attempt to divert attention from sluggish White House response to the COVID-19 pandemic, U.S. President Donald Trump has been relentlessly blaming China for the coronavirus havoc that claimed more than 100,000 American lives. Yet, despite Trump's perpetuation of these evasive tactics, it appears that Americans are not falling for his narrative. From U.S. media's reporting to the remarks of the scientists and politicians, what seems to resonate more within these circles is recognition of the China's efforts to fight the pandemic. Democratic Congresswoman Jackie Speer, who praised China's discipline on COVID-19, was one of the politicians rejecting Trump's account. Tunisian Prime Minister Elias Fakfag stepped down on Wednesday, plunging the country into a political crisis as it tries to weather the economic fallout of the coronavirus pandemic. A few hours after Fakfag submitted his resignation to President Kai Said, the Tunisian government also announced that all the six ministers of the Islamist party and Nadat Renaissance will be removed from the duties. Said must now choose a new candidate for prime minister, but parliament is deeply fragmented among the rival parties and a failure to build another coalition would trigger an election. Chinese cinemas in low-risk areas have been allowed to resume operation starting from July 20th following an improvement in the COVID-19 epidemic situation the China Film Administration announced Thursday. And that's all we have for today. Thanks for joining me on Myanmar Today. I am Aga Jo. Have a great day, everyone. Stay home, stay safe.